hello boys welcome back to another session of video tutorials and this session is meant for class 11th biology students and this is for 27th august 2020 as usual our memory helps us in tracing out what we have been studying understanding and making conceptualization we were talking of the breathing and exchange of gases in human body and we were talking about various pressures different types of pressures partial pressure of oxygen and partial pressure of carbon dioxide that helps oxygen to get inside from air atmospheric air into respiratory system from respiratory system to lungs from lungs to alveoli from alveoli to blood from blood to all parts of the body every tissue present in our body and then once it reaches oxygen reaches the tissues their cellular respiration takes place glucose plus oxygen giving rise to 36 atp molecules plus h2o plus co2 co2 cannot be afford to stay for long time because it's poisonous so co2 has to be pulled out of our body again thanks to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide relative with partial pressure of oxygen so co2 from tissues will be pulled out to systematic veins that is venous system and then goes to pulmonary artery pulmonary artery to alveoli alveoli to lungs and from lungs to trachea and then nose and nostril and out of the body this is what exactly we discussed yesterday so it is the partial pressure that's important in both taking oxygen inside and leaving carbon dioxide outside so keeping that in view let us connect to the present days concept of the path of oxygen and path of carbon dioxide into our body so basically oxygen diffusion takes place inside the alveoli when partial pressure of oxygen is 100 mm hg and from this it enters into blood circulatory system that's it enters into arteries what happens here is in the blood hemoglobin will be there red colored pigment hemoglobin combines with oxygen forms oxyhemoglobin whenever there is presence of oxyhemoglobin we call it pure blood so the partial pressure of oxygen which is around 100 mm hg in alveoli will be maintained throughout the artery and once it reaches the artery from the artery as you are able to see it enters into tissues peripheral tissues there it becomes uh, equal to or less than 40 mm hg and once that happens the partial pressure of oxygen relatively comes down from 100 mm hg to 40 mm hg now it enters to venous system now with low partial pressure so something like 40 mm hg enters into the the veins venous system similarly if you see the carbon dioxide one the carbon dioxide in alveoli will be partial pressure of co2 will be 40 mm hg and it enters into the arteries it will be somewhere again 40 mm hg and once it enters into tissues there is a slight increase you can note down 46 mm hg a peripheral tissue and this 46 mm hg partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be maintained in the veins also and from veins it enters back into alveoli and the partial pressure comes down from alveoli to lungs lungs to respiratory tract and through nasals the carbon dioxide is diffused out so this is how the diffusion helps so the diffusion membrane is made up of three major levels namely thin squamous epithelium of alveoli there is a thin epithelium layer covering the alveoli endothelium as the name says endo means inside epithelium means layer endothelium of alveolar capillaries and then basement substance in between them in between the epithelium and endothelium there is basement substance however its total thickness is much less than a millimeter total thickness if you see it's less than a millimeter therefore all the factors in our body are favorable thanks to god are favorable for diffusion of oxygen from alveoli to tissue and that of co2 from tissues to alveoli so this is how we can represent it in a diagrammatic fashion so a diagram of section of an uh, alveolus with the pulmonary capillary now you can see the air entering inside and the alveoli as we said 
alveolar wall it is one celled thickness you can see there and then there is inner endothelium and then in between there is a basement substance so all together all this together is 1 mm and rbc the flow of blood so blood capillary will be there so through diffusion process the oxygen enters inside the blood and once it enters into the blood it carries along with the hemoglobin reaches the tissues every tissue that is present in our body and cellular respiration takes place energy is released the main purpose of all this is energy production so that's how the partial pressure of both carbon dioxide and oxygen will help to enter inside and as well as to go outside and the thickness also thickness of the membranes also helps in this and transport of respiratory gases blood is the medium of transport for oxygen as well as carbon dioxide about 97% of oxygen is transported by rbcs in the blood the remaining 3% of oxygen is carried in dissolved state through plasma so as i said just now there is a red colored pigment in the blood uh, in particularly rbc that's called hemoglobin it combines with oxygen forms oxyhemoglobin whenever oxyhemoglobin is present in the blood we call it as pure blood in the area where oxygen concentration is high hemoglobin plus oxygen oxyhemoglobin in the area where oxygen concentration is low oxyhemoglobin will be forming hemoglobin plus oxygen so there will be concentration gradient and in terms of uh, carbon dioxide nearly 20 to 25% of uh, carbon dioxide is transported by rbcs whereas 70% of it is carried as bicarbonates about 7% of co2 is carried in dissolved state through plasma so in what way carbon dioxide is carried out by the blood in three forms one is in dissolved state under normal temperature and pressure about 7% of carbon dioxide is carried out in physical solution by physical solution through plasma second one as carbo amino compounds carbon dioxide binds directly with hemoglobin to form an unstable compound called carbon amino compounds co2 hb about 23% of co2 is transported in this form when partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high and partial pressure of oxygen is low in the tissues more binding of carbon dioxide occurs whereas when partial pressure of co2 is low and partial pressure of oxygen is high in an alveolar tissue dissociation of carbon dioxide from carbono or carbo amino hemoglobin takes place that is hbo2 plus co2 becomes hbco2 plus h plus plus o2 and third form as bicarbonate ions bicarbonate ions co2 reacts with water as you are seeing co2 plus h2o reacts with water to form h2co3 what is this h2co3 carbonic acid in the presence of carbonic anhydrase that is the enzyme carbonic anhydrase and in this happens in rbc and uh, h2co3 carbonic acid dissociates you can see here we are writing a, a reversible reaction dissociates into hydrogen and bicarbonate h plus and hco3 minus so the whole reaction proceeds as follows so co2 plus h2o in the presence of carbonic anhydrase forms h2co3 and h2co3 dissociates itself into hydrogen ion h plus and hco3 minus bicarbonate ion in the presence of carbonic anhydrase so the carbonic anhydrase reaction mainly occurs in rbc as it contains high concentration of enzyme carbonic anhydrase and minute quantity of it is present in plasma too so this is how the carbon dioxide gets out of our body so you can see here the body tissue and the blood capillary so co2 it's taken by 
hemoglobin CO2 plus H2O, HCO3 plus H plus. So HCO3 can be formed with H2CO3, carbonic anhydrous presence. So this is how the H2CO3 will be in and even chlorine minus chloride ions will be inside. So oxygen from lungs enters into red blood cell. So inside the red blood cell, I said hemoglobin will be there. So the hemoglobin plus oxygen bonding takes place, oxyhemoglobin will be formed. And then the oxygen released to tissue cells. Once the oxyhemoglobin is formed, cellular respiration takes place. Again, dissociation takes place. So overall, we can see this. So we take first oxygen, inhalation of oxygen, enters through respiratory system into alveoli and uh, thanks to that one millimeter width uh, epithelium endothelium and, uh, and the in between substrate a diffusion of oxygen takes place so in the first step you can see oxygen exchange at alveolar capillary interface it is the alveoli and capillaries that is the uh, veinlets and arterioles that is capillaries so in general the general name is capillary in particular if the branches of artery are then we say arterioles if branches are veins are there you say venules so the junction at which the both arterioles and venules meet and that helps in um, maintaining that partial pressure of oxygen as well as carbon dioxide and diffusion process takes place and that is interface and in second step, you can see oxygen transport. So from alveoli, it enters into artery and artery, you can see it goes into the third one, oxygen exchange at cells. So at every cell, it goes inside and thanks to the diffusion. Now from artery, from blood, it is entering into cell, each and every cell. So as I said just now, cellular respiration takes place. What is that cellular respiration? Whatever nutrients we eat in the form of breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, everything. Finally, the end product of digestion is always glucose. So that glucose combines with this oxygen that is diffusing in forms energy, 36 ATP. So that ATP formation takes place in every cell. And the formation of ATP or release of energy in every cell is cellular respiration. The byproduct of cellular respiration is CO2. So that CO2 cannot be allowed to stay for a long time. It has to be pumped out. Now for that again, diffusion thanks to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and the diffusion process. So from every cell present in our body, the carbon dioxide enters into systemic circulation. Systemic circulation is blood circulatory system involving all the systems, particularly all the cells and tissues. And in step four, you can see CO2 exchange at cells from cell to the vein. And then in the veins, maintaining the partial pressure, it travels back into the pulmonary. Pulmose means lungs, I said yesterday. So it enters into pulmonary circulation. That is, when we talk of this, the CO2 partial pressure is maintained throughout in the veins. And then once from pulmonary circulation, it goes to alveoli that is step number six co2 exchange that alveolar capillary interface and finally because of the uh, force the partial pressure and the internal force the co2 gets pulled into the alveoli of the lungs from the lungs it goes out of the body through respiratory system here what is so important is pulmonary circulation as well as systemic circulation as i said pulmonary circulation is from heart to lungs and lungs to heart. This is one circulation. And systemic circulation is from heart to different parts of the body and every tissue. And from every tissue, the blood comes back to the heart. So there are two circles. One sphere or circle is lungs to heart and heart to lungs. That's one pulmonary circulation. Heart to different parts of the body, every tissue, and from every tissue back to heart. Only thing is, here you can note down pure blood is represented in the form of red color impure blood is represented in the form bluish color so here oxyhemoglobin will be here and in blue color carboxyhemoglobin will be uh, there and always the pure blood will be on the left ventricle 
and the impure blood on the right side. So from right ventricle, right auricle, the impure blood goes back to lungs and there exchange of gases take place because of partial pressures of carbon dioxide and oxygen and it is pumped out. So this is how the exchange of gases take place and in our next session this happens physically but there is somebody who is controlling all these activities like you know maintenance of partial pressure, maintenance of gravity, maintenance of internal pressure, maintenance of uh, say comparative pressure from atmospheric to internal pressure and then thickness of the membranes, the thickness of the walls, a concentration gradient of the cytoplasm all these are controlled by our brain. So tomorrow we will talk about the various centers that are present in our brain that control both breathing as well as circulation. Right? Until then, keep on practicing the diagrams.